this semester, I did my internship at my church, Redemption Church, Data City. It's about 15 minutes from here. And it used to be a Baptist church, and now it's kind of like a non-denominational church, I would say. It's kind of in between, between like Pentecostal and Baptist. And so these are some of the photos that I've taken throughout uh, the semester so far. And they're all in chronological order. We had things like women's group. Um, this is our worship team. I wanted to stage like a Beatles type of, <laughs> type of photo shoot at the Gucci River Park. Um, we have traveling um, ministries come to preach just to kind of share about what they do. This is Loving Hands Ministries, which takes um, men who are addicted to drugs and alcohol and help them get out of that lifestyle through Jesus. We had outreach events in downtown Bay City where we did like spoken word, we did live music and stuff like that for the worship team for Valentine's Day. Uh, guest preachers from other churches in Bay City, um, Bible study, stuff like that. Um, we had a yard sale where we involved our youth through uh, community events like that. We had um, our worship leader take a hiatus for about a month just to kind of recuperate it reset, and so we had, um, these two are actually cousins that came from the same church. So we had Cassidy and her husband uh, take over worship for a moment. Uh, we had our associate pastor preach for us recently. Church work day, where we cut down an entire pine tree that was like at least 50 feet tall. Um, we had another community outreach uh, the day before Resurrection Sunday, um, with the block downtown. And then this was from Resurrection Sunday, where a pastor had the idea to get um, a casket, like a real casket made by monks in New York, uh, bring it in and kind of say, this is the day that death died because of Jesus and the resurrection. And so God led me to this church in 2019 because my dad um, used to work with our worship leader at Jim Brown on Motive. Um, I've been starting a sermon there on worship about January 2020, and then doing media production there since about June 2020 as well. But I was brought on staff at this church uh, this semester in tandem with the internship, and it just made sense. This is where I need to be. And same thing, I've been kind of following along with my worship, with my um, media, social media, um, photos, videography, etc. Kind of like what I do with campus ministry, but a much larger scale. And so the topic of focus through the studies that we've been undergoing along with the internship is the church as herald, which borrows from my ecclesiology class uh, that we read, Avery Dulles' Model of the Church. Excellent book, and it had different, I think, four different categories for what the church can be. Not exclusive to that, but four main designations, and what I chose was definitely the church as herald. It's another name for proclaiming the word, like the messenger, essentially. And so definition kind of goes along with the word kerygma, which is a Greek term that means to preach or proclaim, as well as the, the actual definition by Dulles is one who receives an official message with a commission to pass it on. And so my job at Redemption has been that. It's been to proclaim the word of God through prayer, worship, photography, videography, and social media over the past four months. Oh, this is me in the worship team. <laughs> so my inspiration was the National Directory for Catechesis. Uh, that was really more of like an instructional and a method methodological book for me. And I read from chapter four as my inspiration for my term paper and then for this presentation, which is the divine human methodology. And so a quote from there says, God's own methodology inspires a plurality of methods and contemporary catechesis. So we're seeing that in the 21st century that proclaiming the word of God is not staying on a street corner saying, repent or you'll burn in hell. It doesn't look like Oh, there's a hundred dollar bill on the ground. You pick it up, open it up, and it's like John 3 16. That doesn't work anymore. And so we're having to go to social media, we're having to do like trendy type of stuff to try to hook in the 
the newer generation into believing in Jesus, or at least saying, what is this Jesus stuff? It's not as archaic as I thought it was because they have social media. What is this? So at least to get the younger generation to check us out, not specifically as Redemption Church, but the worldwide church, the KC Church. So a lot of this, like proclaiming the word, really comes into the category of glory of preaching and intercession. So about halfway through the semester, my pastor, like divine whatever miracle, like I was praying, God, I feel like I want to be more involved with our people, not just online. And then within minutes, literally within minutes, he called me to his office and asked me if I wanted to pray over our congregation after every Sunday. And I was like, whoa. That was an answer to prayer within minutes. It was crazy. So this is me praying over the congregation and really heralding that word, reminding them of the scripture, reminding them of the main points that we've gone over from the sermon that day. And so in that preaching and intercession, we read from the National Directory again, proclaim the word of God is to accept the responsibility of the shepherd to guide the sheep in the true direction of Jesus Christ. And the person is called to this. It's not like, okay, this person reads their Bible a lot. You get up there. You do it. But it, it's something that we don't choose ourselves, but the Lord calls us into it to direct the sheep. And then moving back into, we go to slide back. Going back into worship, you have to be submissive to the Holy Spirit, not just in spontaneous worship, but really understanding your congregation and what they need. <coughs> they need a lot of praise or do they need a lot of healing? It's also about having a heart for the people, which is also the National Directory. It is the communication of faith through the Word, which allows for the believer to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, who alone pricks the heart. So it's nothing about me saying, like, go oh, raise your hands, you know, give the Lord praise. It's a great reminder as a herald, but it's also not what affects us in the heart. It's the Word of God. That's why it's important to pick the right songs and the right season and the right place and time to sing certain words over your people. So taking inspiration. Secondly, this is more of an application type of text, which is Christy Fiona, Dallas Lady Shoe by Pope John Paul II. And I read from chapter three, which has a very long title. I have appointed you to go forth and bear fruit co-responsibility of the lay, faithful, and the church as mission. So seeing all these people, this is actually from Resurrection Sunday, that we have a lot of people we have to care for. I don't necessarily have reached the level yet to be able to reach out to every individual person, see how they're doing, but I do have a group of people I always try to keep in mind in prayer and try to make sure they're okay. So it's being in this position I'm in, at Redemption Church, I have to really care about the people first, especially with like online presence. I can't just be looking like, oh, this video didn't do as good, but this photograph didn't get enough likes on Instagram, so it must suck. I got to do something else. But it's realizing I'm there to touch at least one person in their spirit. And if that happens, that's really all that matters. It's great to have a lot of people, but that's not the goal is numbers or likes or the newest trend or whatever it's about. How many people are we personally affecting and changing from the time they leave their seats at our service and go out and actually make changes in their own lives? Kind of like Hannah was talking about, making that change within themselves and then going out and affecting others. So it's a lot of community building, as you can see. A lot of different kind of faces, old, young, black, white, Hispanic, all kinds of stuff. And like I said, the people must receive and believe the word themselves before they can begin to pour into their community. Just a real, like an ecclesiological, uh, ecclesiological belief, main point. Um, and then to the photographs, um, I'm documenting growth. Our church didn't look like this a year ago. Um, documenting the movement of the spirit. I have photos where we get a lot of up on the altar at the end of a, a worship service where they're really pouring into the Spirit as the Spirit's pouring into them. And then, and then I can use this as um, one of the first slides where I can use it for like events like women's group and 
come to our block party and stuff like that using photographs as a way to communicate and tell our community about what we're doing next. So, so the videos, same thing. The, the videos that I make for social media are about, you know, contain our sermons, our uh, what we call Wednesday in the Word, where we read directly from Scripture and we speak that over our people through online services, uh, YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that. And then um, it's also important that with videos we provide entertaining content and balancing that with true gospel content. That's a big thing that we've been discussing in our class recently is we can make entertaining content all day and make people laugh and make people watch this video instead of, I don't know, some clip from some movie where someone's killing someone. But it's about preaching the gospel through entertainment, grabbing someone's attention through Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, stuff like that, and shift people's minds slowly away from what they like or they find entertaining to something that's actually spiritually fruitful, spiritually fruitful for their hearts and minds. So, and then social media, like just posts in general, are good for proclaiming the news, good news, and keeping our community updated about what our church is involved in, like I said. So here are some examples. Um, here are some social media posts from pictures I've taken from service. So they start out kind of like this in January, where I'm just getting used to it involved in it where it's very rudimentary but it's taking the scripture putting it over a picture that our congregation is familiar with and then just trying to warm them up and help them remind them help remind them to use the scriptures that we went over this week um, same thing with this the second image that i've developed the style a little bit but it's still quite simple but it's more about the scripture than you know look at this flashy image and how cool our church is it's the scripture is dead simple and then with this image, this is from Resurrection Sunday, it's a little bit of both. It's, look at our church. This is what we had on Resurrection Sunday. We included the coffin, etc. But it's also got scripture in it, front and center, where everyone can read it, that this is what we went over, and this is how we developed our sermon for Resurrection Sunday. And then I don't know if this, I don't know if this link will work. It would be great if it did. Maybe, yeah, maybe go like that. I don't know why they don't give us a mouse. I know, not, that's awful. Okay, it is. <clears throat> you use that page. We have made it our mission that we will seek to serve others who have been created to worship God, to worship God, living a life that honors Christ. And one of the greatest ways we can honor Christ is by living with one another. Charles Burr said, a person that will not serve God right where they are, will not be God anywhere. Right where we are is where God has called us. Alistair Beck said this, as a Christian, it is impossible to serve God not it is possible to love god it is possible to worship god but it is impossible to truly serve god if you are not serving others but when we know that what we do for others is inspired by the spiritual fervor that compels us to go on and to go on and to go on the price that bought us is greater than any cost jesus could ever ask you can say man that that cost is great it ain't it did cost me we have made it our mission. Now, this is just like a sample of stuff that I try to make from our sermon every week. It's taking the main points, it's taking stuff that's not just about self help and, you know, God will give you a new car. But it's, <laughs> it's about taking what we know to be true and summarizing it with what our attention spans can really latch on to in 2023. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. I just want to show you we're excited. Any questions? <clears throat> Have you done video editing before you started working at your church? Or was that something you kind of learned while you were 
God had um, had kind of like prepared me beforehand because I was doing my own ministry videos online. And then, um, like I said, in the first slide, I started doing media stuff for the church in June 2020. But in January that year, I had started doing video editing for my own ministry stuff. And so by the time that my church had asked me to do it, I was already kind of familiar with it and just doing it as habitually as I have with my church. It's helped me get a lot better every week. Cool.